Hello, everyone. I hope you can all hear me. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the second career exercise tutorial for this week. Please let me know in the chat box if you can all hear me. Welcome everyone once again. Sorry for the delay. We'll start in a moment. Hi, I just dropped off. Um, Mariam, have you joined? Yes, I'm here. You can go ahead. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm joining on my phone. Do you think you could share my slides? If possible. Mariam? I'm sorry, please give me a moment. Okay, sorry, thanks. Okay, so I think Mariam is left. I'm just trying to um, open up the sides on my laptop again. Um, just, I missed the previous tutorial for this week. Um, if anyone could just let me know in the chat how that um, career exercise went for you, the one that was done on Tuesday. Um, if you could just Okay, I think Mariam's back.
Okay, thank you, Mariam. Um, thank you everyone for being here. This is your second careers exercise for week four. So you've all gotten through quite a lot of work in the past um, few weeks. So that's good, well done. Um, Mariam and I are really pleased at what we've been seeing in the work that we are grading. So that's great. Um, this, um, the second exercise for week four is the T-shaped challenge. So um, yeah, could you please go to the next slide and I'll get started. Mariam, could you please go to the next slide? Um, okay, so everything that we are doing here in your training for the 12 weeks is to create professional pe young people that are highly desirable. So we would like you all to leave the training as people who employers want to hire. Um, we want you to be everyone's first choice the minute you graduate and start applying for jobs. So our goal is to turn you into a T-shaped professional. So a T-shaped professional is someone who has deep knowledge and skills in one area and a broad base of general supporting knowledge and skills. So that means that you've got the area of work that you work in. So you are a data engineer, so you have a lot of knowledge about data engineering, but you also have a lot of knowledge about other areas, industries, fields, and you have a lot of other skills. Um, T-shaped skills are not the same for everyone. They vary from person to person, from industry to industry. So a data engineer will not want the same kind of T-shaped skills as a medical doctor. Um, a chef will not want the same T-shaped skills as an accountant. So it's very subjective. It's very dependent on who you are as a person and the industry you are in and the kind of career that you are hoping for for yourself. But generally, T-shaped professionals have um, specific um, broad specific knowledge and then broad knowledge of other things as well. There are also other kinds of professionals, so the I shapes who are specialists with no general knowledge, so that would be a data engineer who does not have any other knowledge or skills outside of data engineering. They only have everything that they do, um, all their interest is only about data engineering. Um, and then the other professional is a dash-shaped professional who has general knowledge but no specialist knowledge. So they do not have a specific industry or area or skill that they developed or work, worked in or working on. They um, just have knowledge about everything, but they, yeah, they don't master one skill. Next slide, please. Um, so for us, it's important for all of you to become T-shaped professionals because those T-shaped professionals are more likely to be hired. Um, so that is why you do a lot of different exercises. That is why you do a lot of different careers exercises to develop your remote working tools, your skills, all of that, as well as on the technical side. And the benefits of becoming a T-shaped professional are that you understand the context within which you're working and how to apply your work because you've got a broader and more extensive view of the world. You are better able to understand the context that you're working in. You are more likely to be able to collaborate with others. So because once again, you've got more experience, you've got more knowledge beyond just what you are doing, it means that it makes it easier for you to relate to other people who are not in the same industries as you. You are more creative. You are more interested generally in your work and you have, you are satisfied because you have more knowledge. Um, you've got broader knowledge 
than others. Next slide, please. Um, so the kind of skills that T-shaped people have, which we would love you to develop, which we are helping you to develop, is of course um, the broad knowledge about a particular topic and a concept of your specialized skill set. So they are um, so everyone will be going, I guess, in three directions, depending on what they would like to do. So the data engineering, web, uh, machine learning and web three, I think, I believe. Um, so you would then have your specialized knowledge about each of those fields, um, which you are developing now. And then you are also um, a T-shaped professional will also have knowledge about every other field. So a data engineer who is deep T-shaped professional will have knowledge about machine learning and Web3 as well. They might, they might not be experts at the other two, but they have basic knowledge about it. T-shaped people also have basic knowledge about humans and how society works. So usually T-shaped people are better at collaborating. They are better at relating to other people and they are better at creating relationships and connections um, because they have better communication skills, um, understanding the industry you work in. So that means not just the tech industry, but you could be a data engineer or whatever specific um, path you will be in, but the industry itself. So finance, healthcare, entertainment, media, understanding the industry or in not just the job you are doing and the company you're working for, but the industry that you're working as a whole and how that industry relates to every other industry. Um, having basic knowledge of how the business world works. So that could mean anything. I will stress again that the T-shaped professional exercise, everything about this is subjective. So it's really dependent on what, you, what you're doing and where you are in the world. So how the business world works, it could mean how finance works. Um, you know, it could mean knowing how to create a contract. It could mean knowing how to apply for or bid for employment. So it, it's very subjective. Um, and then finally, the soft skills that we are, of course, trying to develop for you is teamwork, communication, time management, basic IT skills. I think we all hope that you all have basic IT skills and then just being tolerant and open minded human beings. Um, next slide, please. Mariam, next slide. Uh, okay, thanks. Um, so if we look at this entire exercise from, uh, can you just go back one slide, please? So if we look at this exercise from the employer's point of view, so the people who will be hiring you when you're finished with your training, um, the reason why they would want to hire you is because there are advantages of hiring T-shaped individuals. So T-shaped professionals have core skills. So the knowledge of the, the job that they are doing and the knowledge of basic knowledge of the other professions and the industry they're working in, they have better communication skills, they have better collaboration skills. T-shaped professionals are more flexible and they tend to be more open-minded. So there are just two discussion questions on the next slide.
Sorry, I just dropped off there now. Uh, Mariam, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, I'm not sure if Mariam can hear me. Um, I apologize for this slight chaos today, everyone. I'm very sorry for that. Um, I'll just try and... Um, okay, so there were two discussion questions on my slides and I'm not sure if you saw that. I think Mariam has she stopped presenting. So, um, okay, she's left the meeting. Okay, I will then start presenting her slides. Um, Mariam, are you back? Okay, should I present your slides? That would be perfect because I'm just joining with my phone now. Network is really, okay. really, really strong creating slides. So if you can please present my slides, then I'll just take it up from. Okay, I'm just waiting for my google drive to open i'm also struggling with a really bad connection today so Sorry for the delay, I'm just trying to get it to work.
So sorry about the terrible connection. If um Carrie is not able to present, I already dropped the link to the slide in the chat box. Anyone that has a very stable connection and also have laptop issues can easily just present it while I speak. Okay, Michael, fantastic. Thank you. Okay, someone is doing that. Thank you so much. So you can just go to the first slide, please. Um, Talisa, if you're presenting, I can't really see your screen. Is my screen visible? No. Okay. I can see it. No, it's it's really small. Okay, it's visible now. You can just so, yeah, it's better. Now. Thank you for volunteering. So I can get started, right? So, so, so where where I where I could you start from this one, page one? Yeah, sure. Oh. Yeah. Okay, um, but click slideshow. No, you don't have to do that. Just close that. Okay, okay. that works. It's all good. Okay, now, now, it's all good. It's all now good. you can. Yeah, yeah. Now you can. Now you can. Just put it in slideshow, please. Thank you. Okay. Continue. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. So now let's get to it. Um, um, carry on explaining who is teaching professional design while they are more viable in the workplace at global level jobs and all that. So now back to the exercise, just to give a guide on how we expect to solve it. By now, um, some of you should have seen it because it's already in your career folder for week three. Sorry, week four, as that's the second exercise. Sorry, you're going back and forth again. Okay. So essentially, we want you to be able to identify your core skills, the extra skills you want to use to complement your core skills and be able to create your own t-shirts do some sort of analysis at the end of the day. Just for like yes in the chat box. Can you hear me? Yeah, I already made it on the presentation. Here. Is it okay, not visible? Yes. It is, it is. So but tell please, me, but you have to you... stay you have to stay in that page. Um, oh, okay. because whenever okay. you go somewhere else, we can see everything that you're doing. So you have oh. to stay in PowerPoint until she's finished. Okay, so shall I get back to you? Okay, so let's please just go to slide two, so I just carry on. 
Okay, now understanding the T-shape. So basically, um, the T-shape itself is basically just associated with the letter T. So the letter T has two lines, the horizontal line and the vertical line. And I understand that sometimes you might And be able, we might confuse these lines from each other. So we have the horizontal line, which is the one that is the line flat, and then we have the vertical line, which represents your course skills related to your career choice. So this could be machine learning, data engineering, or three engineering. And then your horizontal line would depict or denote your extra skills, the complementary skills you are adding to increase um, the breadth of knowledge you already have. So I'm going to um, say an analogy that will make you just understand the T-shape better. So see the T-shape as a bed, why the vertical line is that part of the body, the horizontal line is the wing. Um, in order for a bed to fly, you need that wing, right? So your core skills, as much as they are very, very essential, they will make you su succeed in your career field or your global level job. You need wings to be able to like go for that. You need wings to be able to like widen your horizon, if that makes sense. So this horizontal line, which is serving as your wing, you need extra skills to complement the body of the bed so that it can go further, if that makes sense. So see that analogy as the perfect way to really represent why you need to be a T-shaped um, professional. So next slide, please. So the exercise is pretty much asking you to Make an analysis of five core skills related to your career choice, which is machine learning engineering, data engineering, or web three engineering. Then you need to state three, you need to state at least three extra skills to increase your breadth of knowledge. And just explain why you've um, chosen those skills to be the one to um why you're choosing those extra skills and why you really think those course those core skills are what you really need to um embark on this career. So I'm using myself as an example. I'm a biochemist. What are the core skills that are necessary for me to be a better biochemist? So I have research design, biostatistics, chemical analysis, solution preparation, and laboratory management. Then the extra skills that I understand that I need to be able to increase my breadth of knowledge, be able to, um, that will complement this core skills that I have would be science communication, research publishing and writing, and active development. I've explained there that the reason why I chose science communication is because in as much as I um, already made the science findings, I want to be able to I want to be able to simplify it for non-science people. So it was going to be different if I'm going to explain um, research findings to someone that doesn't have a um, science background, it would be quite hard, so I need to be able to Simplify it. So that's where science communication comes in. I need to acquire a skill. I need to acquire science communication as a skill in order to complement my core skills. And the same thing goes for research publishing and active development. These other mentioned skills, as I've stated here, will be able to complement my core skills. It doesn't mean, this is not saying without my core skills, I won't be able to, like my core skills alone, it's not saying my core skills alone are not enough to be able to embark on my biochemist, biochemist journey, but these extra skills would make it better, would amplify it and make me a broader biochemist, if that makes sense. So now, next slide, please. It says, using your previous answer to the previous, using your answer to the previous question, draw out your own T-shape. So now this is my T-shape with my core skills on the straight line the vertical line, and then my extra skills, the skills I think will be able to amplify or complement my core skills on the horizontal line. And you're going to use a color code formatting to represent the ones you have, the ones that are missing, and the ones that I actually have. So green denotes the ones I have, meaning I have acquired research design, chemical analysis, and solution preparation. And the one that I'm missing, that I've not acquired yet, is after development and research publishing. And what I partially have, which means I am still developing them, I have not fully acquired them, is science communication, biostatistics, and lab management. That being said, at the end of this exercise, you will have identified the core skills that you need to be able to carry on with your um, career in data engineering, web three engineering, or machine learning. 
Then you also like highlighted the extra skills you need to be able to complement these core skills and analyze why you think those ones are better than the other or any other ones you probably thought of. Then you get to create your own t shape and share with us and then color code it to show the ones that are missing, the ones you have, the ones that you are still developing. There's a bonus question in the exercise also saying that you should do such a t shaped professional. You could probably check from on LinkedIn or anywhere or from interviews generally to identify any t shaped professional you know. And if there is a part of them you love to emulate, and we've also encouraged that you should check for um, people that essentially have at least three years work experience. So that way you'll be able to um, relate to it that, oh, I see why this person is a teaching professional and it makes more sense to be able to be a teaching professional. So it might seem confusing a little bit because I'm using myself as an example as a balcony. So you might not be able to get the aspects that, um, that should fit in the most. Well, as a data engineering um, or machine learning person, you would know the core skills and you also know by now the extra skills that you think would fit in best. We've also left resources on understanding what is the anatomy of a T-shaped person, um, why people want, um, what makes a T-shaped employee. And, and there's, an also, um, there's also an extra resource about the semicolon um, professional which will advise to go to, which will advise you to read because there is dash shape, I shape, T shape, and now there's a newly introduced semicolon professional. That's been said. Please go to the next slide. Additional information is the exercise is due um, on Saturday, 8 p.m. ECC as usual. Your exercise should be on the Google Doc, no more than two pages. You should follow instructions strictly and as you're carrying out the exercise, you can ask us questions on all career exercise um, platform on, sorry, channel on Slack. Once again, sorry about um, all the position and commotion today. So now we can take it back to the discussion, Carrie, as they will take on questions. Thank you for listening. Um, thanks, thank Mariam. You, yeah, thank you, Teddy. Said. Um, it's not really, yeah, it's discussion questions. So basically, the two questions are you can use these to complete the, um, the assignment and you will then get the slides, which, yeah, they'll be dropped in the channel. So the first question is what are typical adjacent or horizontal qualities in the AI and Web3 sectors? And then what activities did your university offer to help make you T-shaped? So those are the questions, the discussion questions in the slides in the presentation that I did, which you can use to um, complete the exercise. So yeah if anyone has any questions please go ahead um and then we can have a 10 minute discussion on those two questions go ahead rafa yeah hi carrie and mariam thank you for the presentation I mean, it's my first time to know about this idea of T-shape, and it really seems to be like um, great in order to just let person strictly and uh, more um, concise in to define the various skills. Uh, so my question is about, um, so now we have this T-shape is uh, before, I mean, it's, uh, it's the I and the dash shape, right? So is there any limitation of um, including those, uh, those, I mean, those blocks inside the I shape or the dash shape, or it can be as broad as it is, or how, how exactly I am supposed to just limit myself in, um, in when I just have to do that. I hope that you could understand. Uh, I mean, my question is clear. 
Yeah, it was clear. Mariam, are you going to take that one or should I? Oh, please go ahead, because I didn't really hear it clearly. This connection is... But I think from how you answer it, I'll be able to contribute. Okay. Um, Rafa, so everything in the presentation that Mariam showed you with the... Um, with the diagram or the example of the T-shape, that is an example only. So you don't actually have to do it specifically like that. Um, you are not limited at all. The important thing for us is that you know what the core skills are that you need and then what are the broader skills that you would like to develop and add those. The only limit that you have is time. It has to be submitted on Saturday, so you need to do all the research and the resources and, you know, as much as possible and then do it and submit it by Saturday. But I don't think there's the, it, it, it's actually good that there is no limit because that means you have more skills that you want to build on. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Okay, I think I guess what um um where the question is coming from. Uh, <clears throat> so there are basically um three types of professionals, like shape professionals. You have the I shape, that shape, and then T shape. So we're saying the T shape is more profound because instead of you just having an idea of everything, you have an, a good idea of like major things, and then you have a broader knowledge of other things that still complement the major things you know. So at the end of it, that's why we say we should, if you go through the exercise, you're supposed to identify at least five core skills that are related to the field you're pursuing, and then the other extra skills that will complement those things. So you, at the end of the day, you still have to create your own T-shape with analysis, explaining why you decided to pick these core skills and then these complementary skills. So what I have presented is pretty much an example based off me as a biochemist. So at the end of the day, you still create your own T-shape with the core skills at the vertical axis and then the complementary skills at the horizontal part. So there are no limits per se, but from your analysis, you should be able to justify why you're choosing these core skills and why you're choosing these extra skills. And at the same time, still like let us know the one you are missing, the one you are, and then when you're still developing. I see. And can one just get an idea or get used from the analysis that provided by San Academy, the later part? I mean, because they are clearly um, dividing all of the skills that we are gaining from this training. So are you saying you don't know how you identify the core skills? Is that what you're saying? I mean, you not. Yeah, yeah. Like you can't identify the cost that you think you need. Sorry, my connection is really bad, so I'm finding not to pick up words. Harry, did you get that? Um, Rafa, what do you mean about the leaderboard on yeah, the leaderboard? Yes, I mean, um, uh, as we join this training, they are with like we have, uh. I don't know how to the the leaderboard the website of Ten Academy that after mm -hmm. being uh, having our uh, submissions and so on we have like uh, we can see that the, the analysis of every week right so and every skill there is like uh, uh, I mean they are dividing the skills that we are gaining right yeah so what I was saying that. Can we just take from uh, that the same divisions maybe, and we can see clearly that if it's like uh, we are good in this and, and that. And I mean, because sometimes to just realize one's strength, it's not so to just tell myself that I'm, I'm good in that or I'm weak in this, it's not that easy, especially if it's a new field that I'm learning about. Yeah, you can definitely do that. I think that's a good idea. But just remember that you need to 
adhere to the exercise, to the assignment um, criteria or the instructions as closely as possible. So use the leaderboard and the analysis of your skills for whatever help you need, but then also remember that this is um, this is a completely different, um, so you need to at least adhere to the instructions. Um, and once again, I say this a lot, I think I'm not saying it enough, please, can everyone read the instructions? Because a lot of what, um, a lot of the reason some people might not get the grades that they want is because they just seem to not look at certain instructions which are really important. But um, Rafa, coming back to you, that is fine. I think that is a good idea. Um, so you can do that. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay. Um, Mariam, then I think that I would like to have a 10 minute discussion on the second question in the slides that I did. Um, what activities did your university offer to help make you T-shape? Um, I just want five people to speak about this for two minutes. Please volunteer, raise your hands, or as you know, I'm very fond of just calling out names, so I will do that. Um, I just would like to know what activities you did at university which you which help to broaden your skills. So sports clubs, debate teams, anything like that. Just two minutes, five people each. Um, five people for two minutes each, please. Okay, hi Biniam. Please go ahead. Okay, Kerry. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. Uh, so when I was back in university, uh, I actually was part of a club called uh, a crafts, a Craftsmanship. Uh, uh, we actually did kind of woodwork and uh, other uh, handiworks. So it taught me a lot of, uh, it, it taught me to think in a design way, design thinking, basically. I learned uh, to see the world uh, in a more artistic way. Uh, I learned that it's always possible to uh, have approach things from the design thinking direction. So uh, that's actually broadened my skill sets in a way that's not conventional for a computer enthusiast like me. Okay, that's awesome. Um, just following up, Biniam, so that was a physical kind of class, the woodworking. Um, so you won't be doing anything like that in your career going forward, right? You won't be doing anything with wood or engineering anything like that or will you be just working um like software or if you could just clarify uh, that i'm not uh, entirely clear on your question but uh, are you asking me if i will be using the will you, uh, will you be skills? using those skills in your career uh, no, uh, actually, my interest lies in the data science uh, uh, direction. So, uh, the only benefit I got from my experience in woodworking is uh, the perspective. I have a new perspective uh, to look at things. Uh, basically, it taught me to see the world in a, in a different direction, which is essential uh, <clears throat> when, when it comes to the data science uh, uh, in a sense that uh, it allows you it allows me to develop the better uh, visualizations uh, it, it allows me to look at things in a different direction so that's how it uh, contributed to my breadth of knowledge 
uh, but I'm not entirely sure if that qualifies um, or if that uh, is what you yeah. it, it qualifies and I'm going to go ahead and say that you should um, put the design thinking aspect that you mentioned on your T-shape. So that is an example of yeah, I think there you've got a part of your exercise done, Binyam, just from um, adding that. Um, Margaret, I see you added a message. Do you have an activity in high school, um, sorry, in university, a club or team that you joined, which helped to develop your skills? Um, hi, Kari. Uh, yes, I joined a society called IEEE. Um, it was nice because they usually had um, some hackathon competitions, some conferences every time that are very helpful and they really helped me get the connections and the connections to the outside um, market and yeah that's it okay um so then i think that is something that definitely helped to develop your to help make your t-shirt because it helped with your communication and collaboration skills um if you had to communicate with people if you were exposed to new people and new things um Biruk, did you did your university offer any clubs or teams or activities to help make you more t-shaped? Yeah, hello. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Well, um, I was part of uh, an ICT club in uh, in the university, so there were there, there was a number of symposiums uh, discussions and trainings, which actually uh, helps a lot, and uh, it was one of uh, the the good experience I had uh, while I was um, a university student there. Okay, thank you. Um, Henok, did you participate in? any um sorry did you participate in any activities or clubs that made you more t-shaped Enoch okay they left um oh hi again yes go ahead okay sorry uh, my connection dropped uh, no problem. I, th there was uh, there was this one club that I was a part of. We were trying to uh, increase uh, the participation of uh, uh, females in in tech. It was called SheTech, and we had tutorial session for uh, fresh and second year students at the university, and that that helped me uh, understand some basic concepts because I had to uh, give like those tutorials and that just um, helped me understand a lot of basic things that I uh, that I just passed through the courses that's what I have okay that's great and that would then also have helped your um, communication skills so that yeah, yes, is definitely the, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's also something that you can add. Um, Tess Bay, we just need you to tell us what activities or clubs your university offered to help make you more T-shaped. Then we've, then I think five people have spoken. If you are there, Tess Bay. Um, 
Okay, I don't think they are there. Um, okay, these faces, it was a club. Okay, okay, Henok, go with it again. That sounds cool, this way. Henok, your hand is up, you can speak. Maybe that's a mistake, okay. Um, oh, sorry, uh, I Jer think it was by mistake. Okay, okay then, Jeremy. Can you please tell us if you were in a club or did an activity at university that helped make you more T-shaped or on a team? It can be literally anything. It has, doesn't have to do, have to have anything to do with the academy or the training you're doing here. So yeah, just for two minutes. Uh, did you say that, Jeremy? Sorry? Did you say Jeremy? Yes. Did you uh, participate in an activity that made you more T-shaped at university? Uh, no, not at all. Uh, however, my university great, greatly aided me in developing the essential liabilities uh, like the technical skills. However, my okay. campus may be able to provide any further talents. Okay. So you might not have done it, but your university does might have offered it. What? Okay, so you didn't do any activities at university, but they were there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just only focus on the technical skills. Okay, yeah, I understand that. Um, okay, thank you. So that was, thank you for everyone who contributed. Mariam, do you have anything else to add before we close up the session? There's four minutes left. Um, not really. I just want to reinforce that they shouldn't overthink the exercise because it might, it might be new for some people, but if you just think of it as <clears throat> the gap analysis they did for their real world jobs exercise, you know, they have to do a gap analysis between the skills they have and the skills they realize um, these workplaces were requesting for and they were able to like see the need why they should have these skills, why see the need why they should have the skills these organizations are looking for. So just for your t-shirt, so you just need to understand that your core skills should almost be the things you know you need to have to be able to get a job in that field you are pursuing with it. That kind of machine learning and web play. So by now you probably know that oh without these skills, um nobody's going to employ anybody to be a data engineer. So like the core major skills, which is like and you don't have to have all of them, yes, that's on that thing. Because remember at the end of the day you have to you're going to um, color um, color format to this t shape to show the ones you have you're developing because we are all trained or you're all trained so it's okay if you don't have all of them but the fact that you can already highlight these core skills is already important and then think about the other skills that I know are not core but it would be an added advantage if you have these skills so you'll be able to broad um give you that breadth of knowledge and also complement the core skills you have. I think just just to reinforce that as a guide, so no one is so confused. But I would also advise to go to the resources again to get an insight, to get a better insight. And as always, I believe they will do. Um, they will submit great submissions. Okay. Yeah, that's a good. Um, yeah, that is a good tip for them all. Um, so then we can close up now. I think if no one else has anything, if anyone has any questions, you can go ahead. Then if not, we can close up for the day. Okay. Um, okay. Margaret, oh, Margaret. Go for it. Um, I just, I missed the first session and, not the first session, the first parts of the session. I was requesting if um, we'll get this recording on YouTube. Yes, it's the entire um, 
session is being recorded and I will also then put the slides in the channel and the first part was pretty much just explaining the slide so you didn't really miss anything too insane so you'll be covered okay. don't worry okay thanks no problem okay then everyone have a great day reach out to us in the channel you know where to find us um and don't worry too much about this assignment because it's not that complicated great